Hi fellow crocheters, it's Janet with CrochetPatternsForBeginners.com. Thanks so much for stopping by today. Today, as part of our continuing 12 days of free Christmas patterns for gifts, we are featuring these, this set of baby balls. Or balls, um, I know they're very popular to like sit in baskets and things like this, and these could certainly uh, do that as well, but what I like to do with them is give them as gifts because they are developmental toys. Um, we have a small size for just when they start grasping things. This is small enough to fit in a little one's hand. A medium size when they get a little bit older. And then this is for like 12 months up. Toddler size, they can throw it. Um, it just feels good. They feel like they've accomplished something because it's just the right size for them to get their little hands on. Okay, let's get started. Hi fellow crocheters, it's Janet with CrochetPatternsForBeginners.com. Thank you so much for stopping by today. We are going to learn how to do a baby ball set. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to make the small ball. Okay, there's three. There's three in the set. And I'm going to show you everything that you need. To start out with, you're going to need yarn, of course, and you're going to need anywhere from 40 to 70 yards, depending on um, what, how you lay out the colors, etc. But for each ball, it's an average of 50 yards. So you just take it from there and, and, and you'll just know. If you have two skeins or three skeins of this size, you've got more than enough to make this set. You can make a couple actually when it's all said and done. A little bit about this yarn. I got this yarn at Michael's and it's called Soft and Shiny and it's by Loops and Threads. I really liked it because first of all, I did want something shiny. I didn't want matte for these balls. And secondly, I wanted something that was really soft because these are for babies. So I, my first go-to when I always do something like this is usually Karen uh, Simply Soft. But because these colors were just so, this particular one right here was the one that made me go, my, pull my eye, and plus they were having a sale. So who can beat a sale? But anyway, if you can't get this yarn, if you don't live by a Michaels um, or you can't, can't get to Michaels, fear not. Just go ahead and get Karen Simply Soft. You can get that just anywhere at Joann's, Michael's, um, Walmart carries some of the colors, although their colors I've noticed have, at least in our local store, have been very limited. Uh, they're really paring that section of the store down. So go ahead and grab three skeins of this yarn or the Karen Simply Soft in whatever colors you want. I have here this color is called Ice Coffee, which I really like. And this color is called just color, color number 26, I guess. Okay, and it's um, it's gold, taupe, gray, um, ivory, so. All right, so we're gonna have three skeins of those. We're gonna have an F, 3.75 millimeter hook. We're gonna have a yarn needle. We're going to have a pair of scissors, and we're going to have some polyfill, and I'll get to you as to how much polyfill you need for each ball as we get there. Also, too, you might just want to grab the pattern. Um, there will be a link below for the pattern. It's easy to follow. Um, you can't get the printable on the blog. I will list the, a free pattern for the medium size, but the pattern is really detailed, and it will help you make all three sizes. Okay, a word about this before we get started. This particular yarn, like Karen Simply Soft, is rated on the back as a number four, which, I'm sorry guys, in my opinion, this is absolutely a ludicrous, I don't know who determines these ratings, but this is, it's silly. Okay, first of all, when I wrote the pattern, you'll notice in the pattern that the pattern actually calls for a G hook. Well, we're going to use an F hook today because I switched yarn and this yarn is just quite a bit finer. Really guys, this is like a number three. 
I mean, I don't understand their rating system at all. And it says on here that they recommend an eye or 5.5 millimeter hook. Well, I'm sorry, that's insanity. Because if you want something like amigurumi, where your stitches need to be tight, and you're usually mostly working in a single crochet stitch, because we don't want negative space, because we're going to stuff it, and we don't want the stuffing coming out. Um, you usually use, you drop down a hook size other than the recommended hook. On the Karen Simply Soft, it's recommended with an H. That's why I actually wrote the pattern with a G, because I was using Karen one pound. Well, when I switched to this, I said, oh my goodness, I know that the balls are going to be a little bit smaller, and that's okay, that's not a problem. But the hook size is nowhere near an, an, an I. So please just ignore that part of the part of it and also to the pattern um, just go with the F if you're going with this color if you're gonna go with a regular acrylic like Karen one pound or red heart or whatever then an H is fine um, I would draw I would still I'm sorry I would go to a G so okay let's get started like I said we're gonna make the smaller ball now if you don't know how to single crochet please go to our, our videos, which you should be in right now at YouTube, and just look for how to single crochet stitch. Um, I'm not gonna cover the basics here. There's really only three stitches here. We have a chain stitch, we have a slip stitch, and we have a single crochet stitch, and that's it. Uh, we are going to increase, but we increase by doing two single crochets into one, and we decrease by doing uh, two shingle crochets together, which I will show you how to do that in this video. Okay, so make your slip knot and go ahead and chain two. One, two. Okay, now go two single crochets into the first chain. This little, this first and second row, they're just a little wonky, just kind of like, just do it and you'll get through it. So we've got two stitches in our in our first chain. Okay, now chain one and turn. Now remember, we're working with two stitches, so we're gonna put two single crochet into the first stitch. One, two, and then we're going to single crochet into the last stitch. Now we have three. And see where actually you can see that right there is starting to form a little triangle. And it'll be more obvious as we get up in, in, in a few more rows here. So chain one and turn. So two single crochets into the first stitch. One, two, single crochet across. Three, four. Okay. Now we want to chain one and turn. Okay. Two single crochets into the first stitch. Single crochet across. Two, three, four, five. Okay. That's the pattern. Two single crochets into the first stitch, single crochet across, chain one, turn. And we're just going to do this all in the same video because I, it's so easy that I'll just go ahead and it, it won't take that long to get it done. The longest part about this particular project is quite frankly putting it together. So <laughs> that happens all the time. Okay, so we've got two, three, four, five, and six and if you see what's going on here all we're doing is we're just increasing on each row one two three four five six seven okay chain one turn, two in the first, one, two, single crochet across, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight. Okay, chain one and turn. One, two, This is our last increase row because we're going up to 10 stitches. So see how we formed a triangle? All right, go ahead and chain one, single crochet twice into the first stitch. So that's two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay. All right. Now chain one and turn. Okay. Now we're going to do three rows of just single crochet over these ten stitches. So this is row one. chain one and turn. Now go ahead and do two more rows of single crochet and meet me back here. Okay, you've got your three rows of 10 stitches in single crochet. Now we're going to chain one and turn and what we're going to do is just the opposite of how we started. We're going to decrease and we do a single crochet two together to do that. And it's easy, let me just show you how. Okay, so you've, you've chained your one at your turning and you're going to insert your hook and pull it through just as you would if you were going to do a single crochet. But stop, don't wrap it around and pull through. Then go ahead and insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, and now you have three loops on your hook and pull through. So now you've just taken two stitches and made them into one, a simple decrease. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And again, we just single crochet across to the end of the row, chain one turn. Okay, now we're going to do our simple decrease again. So we insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, insert our hook, yarn over, pull through. Now we have three loops. We're going to yarn over and we're going to go through all three loops. Single crochet across. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, chain one, and turn. Okay. Again, single crochet decrease, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. Okay, Got a little split there, sorry about that. So now we're at one, single crochet across, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Single crochet, turn, 
chain one and turn and see how we're forming a diamond now. Okay, so single crochet, two together, one, two, and the yarn over, pull through all three, so that's one stitch now, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Chain one turn. Now do you see what's happening? We're decreasing now, so we're, we're forming a diamond. Okay, all right, we chain one and we turn. We're gonna single crochet two together. You know how to do this now. So that's one, two, three, four, five, chain one, turn. Single crochet two together. One, two, three, four, chain one, turn. Single crochet two together. Now we're down to three stitches. One and turn. Now we're down to two stitches. Oops, that one was split. I don't like that. That's the only thing about this. I will warn you when you take it down to a smaller hook, sometimes the yarn splits a little bit. This yarn just splits in general sometimes, but when you're working with a smaller hook, you just gotta watch it. So now we're down to two stitches. Okay, we're gonna chain one and turn. Okay, here we are, two stitches. So we're just gonna single crochet two together. And now we've got one stitch. And then I just go ahead and make a chain stitch. And fasten off. You don't have to worry about weaving your tails on this project because it's all gonna go on the inside. Okay, do you see what you just did? You made a diamond, isn't that awesome? Okay, now what you're going to need to do is you can pick the colors that you want. It doesn't matter to me, it's your project, your design. You might have a specific uh, nursery theme or color palette that you wanna go for, go for it. Um, these make excellent gifts because there's three sizes and they grow with the baby and Parents, quite frankly, love these because babies throw things and these are soft. And if there's another little brother or sister in the house, nobody's going to get hurt. Okay. You're going to need to make six total of these little diamonds, okay? And again, you can make them in as many, like if you want to make them in three colors, then you have to make two of each color. If you want to make them in two colors, then you have to make three of each color. If you want to make it in one solid color, that's cool too. Just go ahead and make six total. So again, you have to have six of these in order to make a ball. Okay, so go ahead and make your six and we'll meet back here for the construction. Okay, good job. You've got all six of your diamonds and we are ready to go. What we're going to do is, um, these are actually the ones for the medium ball. Um, I haven't made all of the ones for the small ball yet, but I've got these done. And I've also got the large ball put together so that you can see. Okay. What we're going to do here is you basically have two options. It's really at this point, whatever you're comfortable with. The pattern says slip stitch, but it's okay if you don't want to do the slip stitch. If you just want to do... Um, Sorry about the, um, if you just want to sew them together. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do what the pattern says, which is slip stitch them together to show you how to do that. So what you're doing is you're basically forming a ball. And this is not stuffed, and we're going to stuff this in a, in a little bit. Um, and in order to do that, you just have to do, you have to just connect these diamonds to form your ball. 
Now I will tell you that the only thing that can go wrong, and it, it happens and it's fine because it doesn't really matter, and that's the one thing about single crocheting or slip stitching them together, um, it's real easy to pull it apart, uh, sewing not so much. So that's kind of why I like to slip stitch. Now what I like to do is this is just a tip. It's not in there, but um, I'm just going to give you one because you took the time to watch the video with me today. And that is just go ahead and tie at the top where you're going to start joining. Just go ahead and tie that. All right. And if you have to cut that a little bit, like I said, it's okay. This These tails are not going anywhere. You're going to use them as part of the stuffing. Okay. So if they're in your way, just give them a cut. But before you do that, make sure you double knot. Okay, all right, so we're going to stick our F hook into the top of our two diamonds, the top of the two diamonds. And then we're just going to join some yarn here. Okay, leaving a tail, not too long, not too short. But like I said, if these get in your way, just, just move them around a little bit. They'll, they're, that's okay, they'll move. And if you know what, if you want to just take that and just tie it to part of this to secure it, right now is a good time to do that. So let's just go ahead and just tie this tail that we just added to the top of our little pile here. Okay, so now we've joined our yarn. Let me get this out of the way here. All right. We have joined our yarn and now we're going to join two of these together. And what you want to do is if you're working with two colors, then you want to uh, do the two colors. Starting out with the two colors, you're going to rotate. Every other one is a different color. Okay, all right, so go ahead right into this and just do a slip stitch. And if you have to pull that tight, pull it tight. Okay, this has got to be tight. Now, I am not an advocate as you, those who knows those of you who know me know I hate it when people t crochet tightly because it's just too hard to work with them. And when I'm teaching people how to do it, I just, oh my gosh, I just cringe because I feel so bad for them because they're going, you know, they're struggling to get that hook in there. No need to do that. Here, I want you to increase the, in, the intention, the tension of your piece by really, yeah, go ahead and crochet tightly because we don't want the stitches to show on the outside as much as possible. Because when we stuff this, it's naturally going to pull. It's gonna pull apart. And if we've got the stitches tight, then the stitches won't show as much because you are working with different colors here and you can only really, you know, slip stitch one color in at, this, at the right time. Okay, all right, so here we go. We're just gonna slip stitch all the way down into each row, just slip stitch. Slip stitch, slip stitch. Making sure that we're going through both pieces. And see how tight I'm pulling? I'm just really pulling tight. I mean, for me, it's really tight. Uh, for you, maybe some of you, it's not so much, but this is really tight for me. I am really pulling on it hard. And I want to do that. I don't want to pull on it so hard, though, that it's going to, you know, make the pieces gather. And see, mine are laying straight, so you know you're okay with that. All right, so let's just keep going, slip stitching together. Just right down the side, making sure we've got both pieces. Hope you guys are having a good day. This baby project makes me happy. I like doing baby projects. They're fun. I hope you do, too. Okay, we're just going to continue on with our slip stitching to join these two little fellas together. And remember, give it some tension, pull tight, but don't pull so tight that it uh, messes up your, makes your piece not lay flat. Your piece needs to lay flat. Pieces, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna keep going here. Making sure that, you know, we're, we're on the same path, we're, we're going down the same, we're doing the right thing here. We've got, we, we're all even on both sides. One is a knot. We're not pulling into one more than the other so that the pieces are not joining together perfectly. Okay. We're almost there. I'm going to show you when you get to the bottom what's important here. Okay, let's go ahead and let's tie these two pieces together with a double knot. These are the tails. 
from each piece on the other end. Okay, good, that's tight. Okay, and let's go right in there. Get these joined up. When you get to the end, it's a little bit harder. I won't, I won't kid you, but it's all worth it. Okay, and just take a quick peek and see how you're doing. This is the right side of the ball. And obviously we're working on the wrong side because that's where we're making the seam. And that looks really good. See how, what I mean about how those stitches, they don't really show. And that's important. It's also important that if you're doing a color like this where you're doing a variegated and a solid, just go ahead and join with the variegated. Um, if you join with the solid, it will show because generally the solid is darker than the variegated. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one more secure stitch right in here, right at the top. Just working around those tails. They're a bit of a pistol, I know, but we got to do it. Okay, alrighty. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to join another piece. And we're going to join it right here. Now, the only thing that can go wrong on this simple pattern is this you can accidentally get your pieces when you're trying to join them together you can get your pieces messed up and you can actually create a seam on the right side i've done that several times with this and it's okay i've been crocheting since i was eight years old so if you make that mistake dust yourself off pick yourself up have a good laugh and move on okay so we're at the tip so now what we're going to do is we're going to join this other gray piece and we're going to go right into the tip again and right into the tip of our gray piece and we're going to slip stitch it all together. Okay, now that we've got that done, go ahead and take that tail from the new gray piece and just give it a tie, a double tie again, into, your, into one of the other tails. Okay, good. All right, now let's make sure that we're putting our seam on the side, on the correct side. There's our seam. We're going to put a seam here. We're good. It's all good. Let's get going here. We're going to do this last one together, and then you're going to put uh, put the rest of the four together because you see how to do it now. Okay, slip stitch. Just slip stitch, pulling tightly to join. The two pieces and once you've done one honestly that's the that's the it's just like laying down that first row of crochet I don't know what it is about that it's always the first row that's the stinker and after that everything just gets so much easier really tightly going all the way down into both pieces See, I had to pull that down, didn't I? So I wasn't doing it tight enough. Just keep slip stitching all the way to the end. And then when we get to the end, we're going to do the same exact thing that we did on the other end. We're going to tie our tails together. We're going to integrate the other tail in. And we're just going to keep going from there. Now the more pieces that you get, the more you're going to have to just make your own judgment on the end here because you want the end to be secure okay you don't want it to be loose or gaping open this is gaping open for a reason we got to stuff this okay but in the meantime you want your end to be you know you want your center to be secure and if it's not that's okay when you get to your last piece just go ahead and pick what side you're going to use for the bottom or the top Obviously, um, you're going to use the bottom when you end with your last one, wherever. You, if you're at the top, then this would be the bottom. 
you know, um, that's how it's going to work. Okay, so we're at the bottom here, and what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we've got this piece joined really well at the bottom. Did you see that? I just did something incredibly stupid. I pulled through. It's tight, it's okay, but I'm gonna have to what I'm gonna have to do now is just pull through a loop. Because I just actually pulled through a tail instead of my working yarn. And again, it happens. Just adapt. Just go with it. Okay, you know, see what I'm doing here? I'm actually pulling into that. And like I said, this part right here, there's no pattern I could possibly write for this. It just needs to be secure. And you'll see when you get there, you'll know what to do. Just secure the sucker. That's all you got to do. Okay? All right. So now you're going to continue on with joining. Okay. Joining your next piece. You tie your tails and you secure it. Okay, and then when you turn it, see this is this is okay. This is all secure right in here, the center. And that's what's really, really important because it's called a stress point. And in a stress point, that's where in a piece of apparel or in this case this toy, the stress points are are at the top and the bottom because that's where they were joined. They're not one piece, so they're a little bit weaker there, so we have to reinforce them to make them strong. Okay. All right, now what we're going to do is we are going to learn how to stuff this ball. Now you'll see in the pattern, it tells you to go ahead and join all your pieces. And I'm just telling you right now, and on your last one, you got to leave a space that is enough for you to stuff it. Okay, so you don't want it the space to be too big, but you want it to be smaller, but enough to work it in. Now, this is where you're going to use your judgment. I'm going to put, post a link to the polyfill that I use below. But what you do is you just make sure that your tail, because this is what you're going to sew it with, so please don't lose that tail, okay? And just start stuffing it. And this, again, is personal preference. Um, I like to have mine pretty stuffed. I like them to be secure. And another idea that you could always do if you're really creative and you want to make a noise or something like that, they have like jingle bells. You could put a jingle bell in there. Um, if, if I was going to do that, what I would do is I would run a piece of yarn through it just to secure it at the top. Just It's not going to come out, but you know, it's a baby. I mean, I'm overly cautious when it comes to, to babies, so I just... If you're going to do that, but you, if you're going to do that, you're creative enough. You, you already know that. So, okay. But there are jingle bells available and you can put that in there. And then when the baby shakes it, it'll make a little sound. How cute would that be? Adorable. Okay. And then just get it around in there. And it takes more than what the crazy thing about this, this particular project is, is it takes a lot more stuffing than what people think. I think it was just a little ball, you know? Um, but don't put too much in it at one time. Just go slow and then pack it evenly. And you'll see, you gotta kinda like manipulate it with your thumb, but see now how it's like, it's flattening out, but it's not, it, it's, there's more, there's a lot more space there, so. And that's what I like to do when I see it, how it's forming, just keep trying to do the best that you can, okay? These are handmade, so they're not perfect, but that's the part of handmade that's beautiful. Okay, see how it's now starting to look like a ball? But see how we've got a little bit of unevenness here? So just move it around. It's easier when you do it in smaller chunks to move it around than it is when you get all of it in there at one time. Um, and what I'm doing, and you can't see this, but you can, I can describe it to you. I'm taking my thumb, and this is my, this is my favorite way to separate this. I'm taking my thumb, and my thumb is busting it up inside. I don't know how else to describe that other than that. But it's like, it's, it's setting it apart. It's, it's moving it so it's starting to form that ball. Because now at this point, the ball is almost wide enough. we got to get it taller. Okay. So we'll see. And you can, you just got to work with it. It's almost like molding a piece of clay, really. It's just, it's just, it just takes a little time. But when you're, when you've got it, it's so cute. And moms will love this. I'm serious. 
I have given so many of these to as gifts and I cannot tell you how how grateful um, and it's not just because it's me but it, and it, of course it is because it's handmade obviously but it's just that the babies really really love them and the parents love them because like I said they're soft and they're not the kids aren't out there busting a bunch of stuff <laughs> so it's like okay all right we're almost done um now remember too it is better to just overstuff at at, at the beginning, um, not so much so that the, the thing is pulling and it looks wonky, but this, like anything else, this is good polyfill, okay? It's better than most, but at the same point in time, it's a toy. So like any stuffed animal, you know, it's going to it's gonna get worn. And so it's better to have it a little overstuffed at first than it is to understuff it. You know, you think you got it just like right where you want it, which you probably would. But then the baby plays with it for a little while. The totter, toddler plays with it for a little while and it gets, um, you know, flat. And we don't want that. See, our ball is looking so cute. Is that not the cutest thing? Okay, I'm going to put a little bit more in it just so you get the idea. And I'm just going to work it around and make sure that I've got it in there evenly, as evenly as my hand can possibly disperse it. Okay. I need some more right here. That's the only the other thing too. You got to watch. Right here, you're gonna we're gonna sew it up, and so you need a little bit more there because that's loose right now. But we're gonna tighten it right up and. And that's where it needs to go. Okay. And if you don't like it, just open it back up and move it around. But let's see. What do we got here? Do we have a ball or do we have a pumpkin? We want a ball, not a pumpkin. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this. All right. I'm going to get our darning needle here. And we're just going to sew this little ball up, or this big ball. This is the big size right here. Easiest to demonstrate with. Okay, so go ahead, and you left a long tail. Now this is where you want to be just really, you want your stitches to be really tight, but you also want them to be nice. Because you want to try your best for this not to show. Okay, you don't really want it to be obvious where it was sewn up. And the best way to do that is just do like a wrap stitch so that it doesn't, the seam doesn't form on the outside. Okay, you're covering it as you go. Yeah. And don't ever just go through one loop, always go through two. And I'll show you what I mean in a second here. Okay, see that? Okay, see if I just went through this right here and this right here, that's not secure. Okay, but this and this, that's secure. Okay, and I'm just pull it really tight and make it nice and neat. This is the part that you really just need to be relaxed. If you're frustrated or whatever, don't do this now. Put your ball down and do it later because you really want this to look good. I try really hard to just, like I said, I just don't, I don't want people to see this. I mean, they're, they might, a trained person's eye would, but um, if you do it right and you're careful, it's very unobvious. Okay, see? Yes, I have dogs, and they are in with me today in my studio, so. They're Boston Terriers, and if you know anything about Boston Terriers, they do not like to be left alone, and everybody else is at work, so. Me too, I'm just with them, they're with me. I love them. Okay. I keep going. We're almost done. 
videos there, guys. This is so exciting. I hope you're excited. I hope you are enjoying this little project. I'm so thrilled to bring it to you. Okay, look at how good we're doing here. Yes, we're just going to keep sewing it right up. Okay, now what I do when I get here is I just really make sure that it's tighter and that it's secure. And this one is. Um, I did a good job, not to pat myself on the back or anything, but I did a good job um, with the slip stitch. Okay, so let's go in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and I'm going to hit a stitch on all of the tips of these. Okay. Yep. Pull it through. Pull it through one more time. Okay, give it a knot. But pull that tight. And then one more knot. Okay. Now I don't know about you, but it's tough to see that. It is very tough to see that sewing. See that? And that's how you should that's how yours should be. Okay. And then you can play with it a little bit, although it's not as easy <laughs> when it's um when it's sewed up as it was when it was um when we were forming it. But as you can see, we have a beautiful little baby ball and it's all in these colors that moms just really love, these neutral colors. Um they're popular for this year, and I know they'll be popular for next year because I've seen some nurseries that are for babies that are coming in February and March. So, okay. All right, guys. This is the end of our baby ball project. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that it... Oh, I'm sorry. Let's just go ahead and let's just get rid of this tail. So, the cool part about this is here's how you get rid of the tail. Push the needle through the ball. Doesn't matter where it comes out, honestly. Try to get it as close to the bottom as you can. Um, I could have got it closer. Okay. Now make sure that it's not, let the yarn go, and then just go ahead and the ball there. Okay, now give it a slight tug because you want it to spring back in. Okay. There. That's how you hide your tail. So see, we didn't even have to do anything with our tails. We just use that one to sew. Okay, blessings today, guys, and don't forget to stop by at crochetpatternsforbeginners.com or myhandmadebaby.com for more baby patterns. All right, see you soon.